it. So that's, look how close this bird is letting me get to it. You know, he's just lying there, um, quite calm. I could just take him out if I needed to from this range with a catapult, with a net, uh, with some clothing perhaps, or just stone it. So there's different ways I can just get this guy uh, if I needed to. And I'm not saying they taste very co cool, um, but it is an option. Here's a sump with some stagnating water in there, but that is simply a filtering process. There's more water on the hill from a, a stagnating um, hollow in the ground. But again, it's a water source. There's burdock here. Um, there are nettles here. There's so uh, much stuff actually that um, there is quite a lot that we could be going at. And because uh, this place has been occupied by monks in the past, there's bound to be breakout plants that came from there, from the garden that they used to sustain themselves. And then there's this coastline. I mean, you can see just how beautiful it is. It's fabulous. When the tide goes out and the shoreline is exposed, you just follow the tide as it goes down and you start picking the things that you need. Limpets. Not a great tasting food, but a food source. And if not a food source, a bait source. Winkles, cockles, mussels, razor clams, clams, especially on the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the tribes up, uh, up there used to build clam walls that went on for hundreds and hundreds of meters uh, in order to protect the clams from the, from, the, from the force of the sea. It was almost harvesting uh, agriculture from the sea, the first, first form of agriculture. So you could do the same sort of things here. Also in the sea you have things like seaweed, lava breads, sea lettuce, kelp, carrageen, a whole host of seaweeds that we tend not to think about. But actually a vital source of nutrients. And look what I've just stumbled along here. A little... A little... Uh, a little collection of snail shells which indicate to me that the birds here are also feeding on, on, on snails. And if the French can do it, guess what, so can I. I've eaten many many snails in my time and I tell you what, they are delicious with some wild garlic just fried up in some uh, in a pan. So just been here now for round about an hour or so and just wandering around here I found an abundant source of resources that I could adapt um, to survive here and that's before I even get down to the shoreline we're not going to get to the shoreline today because quite simply uh, we have to there's the boat down there Lots of people milling about. We have to be out of here before the tide turns, otherwise the boat will just simply won't get out. Um, I'm almost tempted to miss it on purpose, uh, just to be able to spend the night 24 hours here. Um, <laughs> what's this space? You never know. But I think that would actually cause more trouble than it would be worth. Anyway, behind me here is this building. This is uh, evidence of early Christians, early Christians that settled here. It became a paid place of pilgrimage. There was um, a saint, St. Aidan, apparently, is buried here somewhere, I guess somewhere in this region. Uh, so that behind me is the ruins of uh, one of the religious churches that was built here. So all in all, it's been a good day here today. Um, it's worth worth the, the, the hours sail to get over here and the hours sail to get back. Um, because looking at it from a survival perspective rather than a tourist perspective, I'm very very confident that you know I could start building a survival existence. But more importantly, I'm thinking about how I might be able to thrive here, and that's the most important thing. It's okay for surviving for a few nights, a few days. Maybe even a couple of weeks um, but you've then got to look at how you might survive long term um, and I think it's entirely possible here given um, given a little bit of effort 
an understanding of what it is that you are doing and the resources that are available here. And actually, there's a lot more than I thought there would be. Uh, I was kind of expecting a fairly barren bit of rock in the middle of an estuary. Um, but it's actually much more than that. So I'm very, very pleased about how uh, this trip has been worthwhile from that point of view. I'm going to go wander a little bit more now. I'm going to go look at a different part of the island um, and see what's over that area. I'm fairly sure that that is actually fairly barren compared to this side um, because it's on the it's on it's it's really really exposed to the uh, to the to the northern ocean, so to speak. So this is Dave for the NFPA signing off from May Island in the middle of the Firth of Forth. I'll come back and I'll do some more coastal survival stuff later, but for now, I'll see you soon.